I want to create the American you want. And with that, I want to make sure that you know that I am going to be that fearless advocate when I am elected. Thank you. My name's Sasha Yulthorpe, and I'm running for SG president because I'm not satisfied with what AUSG has been this year. I believe that student government has been closed off and isolated and not including what every student on this campus wants. As student government president, I'll bring every student to the table. I'll make sure that student government doesn't just talk about doing things, but it actually creates solutions. That's why I proposed an extensive platform so that we know exactly what we're doing once we get in office. Hi, I'm Brian Paz. Student government isn't doing what it's supposed to do. Student government needs to engage and elevate our voices forward to move us in a broader direction. You see, I think the job of student government president is very simple. You need to engage and listen to students and advocate on their behalf. Student government has not been doing that sufficiently enough. If I'm elected student government president, I want to empower and elevate our voices forward to move us in a brighter direction for a better American for all of us. Listen, there are a lot of issues on this campus. We need to fix AU Central so it's easier to navigate. We need to be proactive instead of reactive on issues that affect students, like sexual assaults and mental health. We need to give Greek life, student media, and clubs the support they deserve and the space they need to thrive. We need to make sure that student employees, like RAs, are fairly compensated and provided with a better working environment. And we need to create an AU where students of color feel fully included, safe, and comfortable, truly making it their home away from home. Listen, I understand that the issues that I'm running on will be difficult to achieve, but I'm confident we can get there because I believe in the power of student voice. Okay, great. Thank you for being here this evening. So these first few questions will be for all of you and we'll go in the same order in which you gave your opening statements. Um, but can you explain your renovation plans for the third floor of the Mary Graydon Center? Of course. Uh, so I feel like student space is a huge issue here at American University. I believe that being part of the Residence Hall Association, student government, and a professional Greek fraternity, uh, I've, I've seen firsthand the issues that our campus community faces. With that, I, we as student leaders cannot wait till East Campus is built to address these needs. Action starts now. We need to make sure that the administration is being receptive to creating a space where students are able to collaborate, interact, hang out, because we don't have that now. And we need to make sure that we're able to create an atmosphere here at AU where students are able to pitch ideas off one another. I know that we're here in our nation's capital. I think that's the best thing about it. We, Ideas can be turned into actions, and this is one of the actions that I want to make sure when I'm student government president that I will achieve. That starts with the administration. The administration has been extremely, extremely hesitant in moving forward with the talks, with uh, <coughs> pushing it off as the lower end of their uh, conversation, and we need to make sure that we are going to make the university and administration receptive to the student voice, and that's what we need to do. SG is the student voice, and through that, I will ensure that I will make that happen. Great, thank you. Sasha? So first I just wanted to talk about Martin speaking about action. I have really tangible solutions to making sure that the third floor of MGC becomes a space on campus that we all deserve, because I think the lack of student space on campus is an indication from our university that the things that we do outside of the classroom aren't important, and I believe that they really are. I want to make sure that the third floor of MGC has dedicated Greek, club, and student media space, and I also want it to be a place where students can just hang out and study. But more than that, I believe that we need short-term solutions because we don't have time until East Campus is finished. I want to reform room reservation systems so that we're able to actually reserve those rooms and keep them for ourselves. In addition, I want to open up the third floor of MGC today because those rooms are available to us, but they're locked and out of reach for us, and I think that's unacceptable. All right, great. Brian? Absolutely. Uh, clubs, student life, uh, student clubs, uh, student media, and Greek life, they're the backbone of student life and engagement here at American. Um, I'm part of a club, I have a lot of friends in Greek life, and I see firsthand how much they enjoy it and how much their AU experience would be different if they weren't a part of these communities. We need to make sure that we're supporting them in every way that we can. So I want to make sure that the third floor of NBC is dedicating to student space to make NBC into a student union building. Almost every university in America has a building dedicated just for student life, and we don't. I think that's unfair. 
So I'm going to push for that. But we also need to make sure that we find other ways to support clubs, student media, and Greek life. Next year, during the budget advisory committees, I'm going to stand with clubs and student media in every way that we can to make sure that they're getting the support they need. All right, great. The next question that we'd like to ask all of you is, since you've all mentioned in your platforms that you'd like to do something to reform AU Central, we'd like to know what each one of you would specifically do to address what you see as the problems that currently exist. Of course. Uh, AU Central is extremely um, not receptive to students. They do not work for the students. They work against the students. And we need to change that uh, from being professional uh, in timely responses that uh, they provide to all the way being able to actually provide students with the necessary resources to make sure that, you know, in terms of financial aid, making sure that we as a university are being transparent, um, giving them the avenue of resources that they need in order to make sure that simple questions are going to be answered to the, simple, the simplest form on their side. And we need to make sure that AU has a great, they, they're really, really great at the fact that they like to avoid topics like this. They, have, they like to avoid actually giving tangible solutions and options. And we as student leaders, especially in a presidential role for me specifically, we need to make sure AU Central is a top priority. We need to make sure that AU Central is being able to be receptive um, to the student's voice and being able to answer those questions effectively. Thank you. Right. Sasha? First. <clears throat> I'd like to increase the privacy options that we have in AU Central. We should have more than just an option of entering a private room. That should be the default. Because when we're talking about our financial decisions, those aren't things that should be discussed in public. Second, I want to make sure that the tra that uh, the surveys about the service that we're getting in AU Central are transparent so that we can actually hold the people that are giving us our financial aid accountable for the service that we're providing. Because we're more than customers at this university. And finally, I want to make sure that we have a resource guide through student government because AU Central isn't giving us the answers that we need, and I want to make sure that students are getting those answers when they deserve them. I want that resource guide to include information about FAFSAs, third-party scholarships, because we need to be making smart financial decisions today. Thank you. Brian? Uh, AU Central is really difficult to navigate, uh, and almost every interaction with them is incredibly stressful. Uh, I know this firsthand. Last summer, I got a part of my financial aid removed, and I had to go through the whole financial aid appeal decision. And that was inc incredibly stressful. Uh, they didn't even let me know when they removed my financial aid. I had to look myself. Uh, so clearly, uh, AU Central is broken, but the administration doesn't know that, apparently. So one thing I would work for is to work with the administration to make sure that we expedite service to make sure that students are getting the help and the financial guidance they need and deserve as soon as possible. Another thing I really want to do is improve financial aid literacy. A lot of students on campus don't understand how the whole financial aid system works. And lastly, we need to make sure that the whole financial aid appeal process decision is done in a much quicker manner. Okay, thank you. And how exactly do you guys plan to address the problem of sexual assault on AU's campus? The reality is sexual assault affects all campuses across the, across the nation. And I feel like the recent events of Title IX um, is a great stepping stone in order to address a lot of the needs that our university needs to face. We see this as a negative light, but we can turn this into a positive. We need to make sure that AU is quick to make sure that we as students see a problem, the government sees it as a problem, and now we have to be able to facilitate the conversation to make sure that we turn that into action. The Worth Administration has done an amazing job furthering sexual assault prevention here on campus. I know personally that Brian has led a charge in sexual assault in the Senate, and I do commend him for his efforts, but that's not enough. We need to make sure that the next part is to really break down the title of the uh, Title IX language and be able to foster it into our community and be able to make sure that students are being provided the resources and the flow of resources is going to be evenly distributed throughout the campus community. As president, I'll ensure that the sexual, working, uh, sexual assault working group is going to continue the discussions. I know in the It's On Us report, this is, the, this is one of the final things that we need to do. And if we're able to do that, we can show that campuses across the nation 
that we are going to be the leader in prevent, uh, sexual assault prevention. And um, just a follow up, how do, do you see this um, happening, like kind of like a step by step thing? Because a lot of student groups and faculty groups are already required to take um, sexual assault and sensitivity trainings. Of course. Um, um, thank you, and I appreciate that question. I, the step by step is simple. We have our data. <laughs> we see that uh, the data says that students here do not feel comfortable, uh, especially females or males. Uh, we need to make sure that we are being able to have those discussions with the administration because they are reluctant to even act upon it. And there's no, we have, as president, I know that I will not be silent. I will make sure that sexual assault prevention is going to be at the forefront of the issues. We need to make sure that they know that we are extremely, extremely, extremely disappointed in the way that they've been handling this. And we need to make sure that going out, we need to make sure RAs are being a little bit more receptive to how to report instances and cases. We need to make sure that the administration is able to follow up on the reporting and make sure that they're able to enact it going throughout throughout the time frame. And we need to give timely responses. We need to make sure our survivors are given the resources here on campus. And I will make sure that I will do that. All right. Thank you so much, Martin. Sasha? First, I want to mandate consent-based training on this campus. Right now, we have a pretty heavy mandate for step-up training, which is just for bystanders. So that means that we are intervening when there's already a problem. But I want to reduce the likelihood of that problem even happening in the first place, which is why consent-based training is so important. And then I want to reform the student conduct code so that it actually reflects the values of consent that we have on this campus. I want yes to mean yes instead of no to mean no, because it leaves us vulnerable and unsafe. I'd also like to increase care for survivors on this campus because we've failed them in a lot of ways. And by expanding, expanding the counseling center, we will be more receptive to helping those individuals. And finally, I want to partner with the Greek community in making sexual assault prevention a top priority. Leaving Greek life out of the conversation is a disservice to our students, and it's irresponsible. OK, well, since you mentioned the Counseling Center just now, mm -hmm. is there anything else that you would like to reform in the Counseling Center? I know several of you have mentioned it in your platforms. Uh, yeah, I'd really like to make sure that the Counseling Center not only expands onto the third floor of MGC and expands its services, but also reaches out to the students because it's locked in the corner of MGC and it's not accessible. I want to help them do programming and outreach efforts so that every student on campus knows exactly what our resources are here. All right, great. Thanks, Sasha. Brian? Sexual assault is a huge issue on our campus. Uh, there was a survey two years ago that showed that 19% of students have experienced uh, sexual assault. And we know that nationally, one in five women and one in 16 men will be sexually assaulted before they receive their college diploma. Uh, this is an issue that I've been working on really hard the past year. Uh, I sit on the AU It's on a Sexual Assault Awareness and Prevention Task Force, uh, and I've been, wor been working with the Worth Administration uh, to produce the report that w was released last November. Um, I also, as a senator in student government, I created a programming project, and I worked with RHA. Um, actually worked with Martin on this, um, RHA um, clubs to have peers workshops in every single residence hall. And approximately 150 students attended this. So thanks to the collaboration we did with RHA, uh, 150 students were trained and now are less likely to commit sexual assault. And then lastly, as a senator, um, I passed two bills. One bill to mandate everyone in student government to attend peers and a club grant that financially incentivized clubs to undergo Peers workshops. If you don't know what Peers is, Peers is a one hour workshop that talks about consent. Um, when it comes to sexual assault prevention, I think the next SG president basically needs to pick up the torch of the current administration and keep going. We know exactly what we have to do on this issue. Like, like Sasha said, we have to keep pushing for consent based education for all students, uh, including incoming students during Welcome Week. Uh, the administration has consistently blocked our efforts to do that. But my passion to pass this is relentless. And also to echo your guys' points, um, although prevention is key, su supporting survivors is also important. Victim blaming is still a big part on campus, and a lot of survivors don't feel comfortable going to AU uh, with their assault uh, because they don't think AU would do anything. And who's to blame them? AU has very little to show for. OK, well, while we're on that topic, can you discuss the Title IX investigation a little? Absolutely. So it was not a surprise when that happened. Um, you know, I saw that coming a mile away, uh, and so did a lot of my friends who are really active in this fight. 
Um, I actually think it's a good thing for us to be into under a Title IX investigation because it puts further pressure on the administration to act. Uh, we've been pushing real hard for action, and this is sort of the last, hey, you got to do something uh, before it's too late. All right. Well, it's time for us to go to our next break. And so we'll be back in just a couple minutes with more from our candidates. Welcome back to the 2015 American University Student Government Presidential Debate. So we have one more question for the three of you. Um, we would like to know what your experiences are with minorities or as a minority on campus and what is the perceived problem and how will you fix them? Of course, before I address that, uh, before the break, uh, Brian stated a statistic that 19% of students, um, I just wanted to make sure when he speaks just who collected that survey and how many respondents answered to that. Um, that was a survey uh, conducted by Dr. Palmer that's, uh, that you can find in the AU It's On Us report. Okay, thank you. Um, and to address your question, um, I feel, I know that this campus community has been very uh, silent in the fact to address racial issues here on campus. And we uh, as student leaders need to act. I've, I know for a fact the way that I've gone about it I've met with a lot of multicultural organizations here. I've met with a lot of students um, to just be able to get myself more educated, uh, to become more of someone who's able to address that, and especially in a leader leadership position. Uh, because if I'm going to be leading the whole campus, I need to be at least responsive to the issues and at least know what's going on. Um, we need to make sure that we have these discussions that are ha being being talked about right now and actually turn them into action because it's terrible. We need to actually follow through with a lot of things that we're, we're saying. Um, so for me, I know that you know in student government, we do have a directorship dedicated to this. We need to enhance on that. We need to make sure that we're following through on a lot of things that the um, you know, minorities here on campus want. First and foremost, we need to make sure that there is integration with uh, the faculty. I, I know that we need to have the discussion with this administration and tell them that this is no longer um, a time where we are silent. That, you know, I, I like to have, I came to AU to just make sure that I become culturally sensitive. I wanted to become educated because we pride ourselves on inclusivity and diversity. And as a student, I believe that we need to learn off of these diverse experiences and across any perspective. So whether you're African American, whether you're Muslim, whether you are anything other than white, you, we need to make sure that we're able to foster that discussion and be able to turn it into action. And I want to do, I want to make sure that we do do during Eagle Summits, um, sensitivity training in um, multicultural appreciation and making sure that we address these needs. Um, so I feel it's I'm a- I'm sorry, Martin, sorry, we ran out of time. Of course. For you, um, I really feel as though my eyes have been opened to the problems of race in our community at American University and in this country. I grew up in a really diverse area where I ignorantly believed that racism was over. I had no reason to believe otherwise, so I came to American University believing the same was here. And over the last semester or two, I've realized how incredibly wrong I was. Um, the events that took place all over this country, including Ferguson and Eric Gardner. And, uh, just a few weeks ago at UVA, I realized looking at that student at UVA that that could have been an AU student. And it's only a coincidence that it wasn't. He is a brother of a fraternity. He was a member of the honors program. That's a standing member of the community who the only thing I can call that is absolute injustice. And I kept believing that the Yik Yaks were just a small member of this community and that I really, really tried to make excuses for that. I had coffee a few weeks ago with a good friend of mine who also went to my high school but goes to American University. And she told me that she feels less safe at AU than she does at home. And I, it completely broke me. I didn't understand the world that I was living in at that point because I feel so much more secure here. And I realized at that moment how important making sure that AU is diverse and inclusive truly is, which is why I will never be silent on the issues regarding race on this campus. AUSG hasn't said anything about those yik yaks, and they haven't really expressed any distaste or disgust 
for the things that have been said about minority students on this campus. I want to appoint a director of diversity and inclusion because the directorship that Martin talked about actually isn't empowered to advocate for those things on this campus. And finally, I want to bring the conversation about cultural sensitivity and race into the residence halls because the students in the residence halls face some of the worst racism on this campus. And I want to make sure that students are educated when they're living together. Great. Great. So the issue of racism on campus is an issue that I'm really happy that finally we're talking about it in a campus-wide level. Uh, a lot of students of color on this campus are struggling. A lot of them don't feel comfortable or included, or sometimes a lot of them don't even feel safe. On Friday, there was a, a rally in MDC, and somebody yik-yaked uh, a death threat to all the folks who were um, protesting in MDC. So clearly, racism is alive and well on this campus, and we need to tackle it head on. So what would I do? First off, as student government president, I'd talk about it more. Student government has done nothing for students of color on this campus. We need to make sure that student government is reflecting uh, the diversity that AU claims to have, and we need to make sure that student government is advocating for having uh, AU admissions recruit more students of color. If you look at the racial diversity among our student population, it's actually not, th not, not that much. 7% black, 11% Latino, and 6% Asian American. That's not diverse if you ask me. We also need to make sure that uh, we are advocating to hire more faculty of color. There's literally zero Latino professors in SPA and just a handful of black professors in SPA. And among the other schools, you'll find similar numbers. We also need to find ways to make sure that we're educating students on this issue. Having more events, that's great, but unfortunately that sort of preaches to the choir. So we need to make sure that we are finding ways to educate students who are unwilling to unlearn their racism. Okay, thank you. Now we're going to get into a period of asking you each individual questions. All right, so the first question that we have is for Martin. <laughs> and so one very unique thing that you listed in your platform was your plan for the white route. Do you want to talk a bit about that now? Of course, yeah. I'm happy that someone is going to be able to shed some light on that. Uh, so right now, uh, AU is in the process of opening up the law school, the new law school, and the shuttle route down to uh, the red route is no longer going to be feasible. So how do we use our resources effectively and change things? This is to target off-campus residents. Um, I can only imagine the struggle of walking in the cold uh, in a <laughs> cool evening day and coming to campus to go to class. I would not get out of bed. I would be so tired to not do it. So. Um, this is to address that uh, concern to make sure that we get the Berks, we get the Avalon. We are able to talk about other uh, off-campus residencies on Wisconsin Avenue and it goes to Townley Town so students are able to get places quicker. Also, I feel like, you know, Giant is over there and, you know, some students cannot financially afford to go to Whole Foods. I'm one of them. So I usually go to Giant to make sure that a little bit cheaper and, you know, it saves college student a little bit of money. So my plan is to make sure that, you know, Senate has already passed measures to start the discussions when elected. I will make sure that we're going to also have a directorship that is able to target off-campus communities and being able to integrate them back into our, um, into the talks of our community. Because they're still our community, where they live off or on campus. And this is just one facet that I would like to bring to the table. Okay. Yeah. And as student government <laughs> president, how much sway or power would you actually have in helping this happen? Well, I mean, let's just take, like I said, the red route is already, you know, it's going to be something that we, we as college students use to go to the law school. So let's think about that next step and let's think about that next action, which is being able to utilize our resources. Like we already have a, a route that's in place, so why can't we not just re reroute reroute, just like when you're on Google Maps and it makes you reroute, reroute our plan to make sure that we're including another facet of our community where it's been ignored for a very long time. Thank you. Right. So, Sasha, as the only candidate to call out the others on an overuse of generalizations and buzzwords, how feasible do you believe that your platform is as the student government president? I believe that my platform is absolutely feasible. I only suggested policy initiatives that were both ambitious and pragmatic. In fact, I believe that a lot of the things that I suggested could actually be accomplished over the summer. So by the time students get back to campus in the fall, 
we've already created great strides and made sure that our student experience is much better than it's ever been. All right, thanks, Sasha. Um, so, Brian, you're part of more than one minority group on campus, and so this issue is a little more personal to you than it might be to some of the other candidates. So, elaborating on your earlier answer to the broader question, what do you think are some of the very specific problems facing the minority communities on campus, and what specifically would you do to address them? Absolutely. Um, like I said earlier, a lot of students of color are struggling. I'm Latino. Uh, I would actually be the first Latino student government president in 60 years. Um, but I have it much better than a lot of my uh, black friends on this campus. Um, you know, it's not just the yik yaks. It's personal messages on Facebook, texts that can be extremely, uh, you know, it can just wear you down for a very long time. Um, so we need to make sure that we continue to advocate on their behalf. Another issue that I feel that we, ha we haven't really talked about in this election is the myth that AU is LGBTQ inclusive. I think it's fair to say, comparatively speaking, uh, that AU is LG friendly. But when it comes to BTQ, we still have a very long way to go. Transphobia is alive and well on this campus. From faculty to students, I've heard transphobic comments all over the place. So we need to make sure that we're supporting trans students on this campus. Uh, I had the American Constitution last semester, and my professor, I won't name his name, but he kept misgendering Chelsea Manning over and over again. And I corrected him, but he still kept going. Uh, so that's one identity we need to focus on. Um, but just so I can talk a little bit more about students of color, mm -hmm. um, I, I had to close my point earlier, but I think one point I really want to stress is I would push for a general education course that all students have to take before they graduate to learn about racism. We need to make sure that AU is not graduating you know, students who are racist. Because a lot of us are going to be congressmen, a lot of us are going to be cops when we graduate. So we need to make sure that the folks who are graduating from AU um, are really great allies to the struggles of uh, students of color. And how will these courses necessarily, do you, do you see them being formatted? So one thing, uh, actually I went to a Latino student forum last week and uh, Scott Bass, the provost, was there. And we talked to him about these issues and he clearly seems not too receptive to all these ideas. Um, you know, it actually, if you look at the numbers, when you, when you look at faculty of color, uh, that number has barely increased in the past 10 years. So one thing I really want to do is elevate and empower student voice so we can push and create external pressure on this issue. And as an internal uh, body, I would pr put pressure on him from the inside. In terms of you know, how, can we, how can this class be, uh, logistically happen, I would like for it to be within the 10 gen eds you already have to take, so it wouldn't be an addition, it would just be within those 10 classes. Um, so it wouldn't be an extra burden among students. Okay, thank, thank you. you. So Martin, what are some of your ideas to improve the community service experience and options at American University? First, before I address that, I just <coughs> want to ask Brian a quick question. Um, mm -hmm. Do you feel as the general education requirement is enough to address the needs at this university? I feel as though, you know, I've taken two gen ed classes um, that revolved around power, privilege, and inequality and roots of racism, and I'm, I would like to know, uh, does it really get into the issues that are facing our campus community? Absolutely. That's a really great question, Martin. Um, the reason I'm going to be pushing hard for a gen ed is because a lot of students have said, hey, let's have an Eagle Summit workshop. Let's have a cultural sensitivity workshop at Welcome Week. We should have that. But if you're racist, two hours in the Ward 1 isn't going to make you not racist. So we need to make sure that we have something comprehensive like a gen ed course. I think it takes a few months for students to unlearn their racism. Uh, I do believe that it can actually work. This is also not a new idea. A lot of universities across the nation have uh, gen eds that students have to take to unlearn their racism. Thank you for answering. Mm -hmm. um, to address uh, the question that's being asked, um, my plans for community service are simple. Uh, American University Student Government has the Community Service Coalition. Um, it's an untapped resource, and we have so much potential to tap into the outsides of DC. So if elected, I really think that we need to make sure that I, you know, GW hones in on con having over millions of hours of community service. AU does too in their first year. Uh, when we do our freshman service experience, but we need to make sure that we expand upon that. We get busy, we become, st we become college students, we get our, we, we make sure that we have our own passions that we want to address and everything. So I want to make sure that we can institute a design, a designed program that targets the whole entire community. 
utilizing the Residence Hall Association, using student government and their resources. We're elected leaders. We got elected for a reason. So being able to just outsource that and making sure students come and do a one semester, I'm only asking for one semester, to go out and actually be able to really have a conversation with community members and being able to interact because actually providing service for students here at, you know, in, with students, um, other individuals outside of our community, we can actually benefit from learning. And I feel like going outside the classroom is the only way we can take the knowledge that we have inside the classroom and be able to translate into the real world. So when you say that you're asking for one semester, would students be able to receive credit for doing this additional service? Well, obviously, we have in, in AU, the 40, if you take, do 40 mm -hmm. hours community service, you can add it to an additional credit. I feel like we need to hone in on that. We need to expand that. We need to make sure that we are able to foster the discussion with the administration to see if you attend a service event. Can you, we need to be acknowledging the fact that we are a university that takes pride in our education and giving back to the community that we are here. So yes, of course, I'll definitely, I'm, I, would, I would be lying if I didn't, I uh, <laughs> looked into that, um, but I would definitely say that the continued talks are definitely an issue, uh, definitely something I will look into. All right, great, thank, thank you so you. much, Martin. And so our next question is for Sasha. And so you've talked a lot about your plan for organizing student workers and making sure that they're more able to advocate for their rights on campus. Yeah. Can you elaborate on that? Absolutely. I've spent the last year as the Director of Student Rights, and I have been disappointed that I haven't received the leadership from the top in order to make sure that that's really been enacted. I've written a report on the state of student worker rights on this campus, and it hasn't been published. I believe that student workers aren't just underpaid. I believe that they are actually incredibly mistreated by this university. I want to make sure that there's a bill of student worker rights so that when they sign their contracts, they know what their rights are and they aren't able to be diluted into the fact that the way they're being treated is acceptable. I also want to make sure that there's an advocate in American University so that when a student feels as though their work experience isn't cutting it for them, there's someone that they can go to who won't jeopardize their job position. And finally, I want to organize student workers on this campus because there's no other way to protect them from the likelihood of being fired when they advocate for their own rights and their own jobs. And what are some of the problems that you um, experienced, that you've heard of, and like kind of, um, you gave some of your plan, but kind of a cause and effect thing, like how yeah. would you respond? So mostly the report focuses on the state of RAs. I know that student workers take many different forms, but really I was very focused on the mistreatment that RAs face. RAs work 30 to 40 hours a week. They aren't paid nearly enough. In many cases, they actually have their financial aid taken away from them based on the compensation that they get for their housing as RAs. In many cases, RAs are dealing every single day with issues like sexual assault, mental illness, and substance abuse. They aren't receiving the care that they need in order to actually help the residents in their community. And finally, there are clauses in their contracts, like other duties as assigned, that leave them vulnerable to be abused by their workplace. Okay, thank you. All right. Well, we're coming to another commercial break, and we will be right back. All right, welcome back to American University's SG Presidential Debate 2015. It's time for our next round of questions. So, Brian, um, the, one of the main aspects of your campaign is advocacy for minorities on campus, and you've been on the undergraduate Senate for about two years. Um, but as far as our research can show, um, we haven't really found a bill that you've sponsored that specifically speaks to minority rights on campus. Right. That's a really great question, actually. So I'm, I'm the kind of senator where I really don't write that many bills, actually, because I, I, I think the whole process is sometimes unnecessary. Uh, and I'm sometimes kind of impatient, so I just go at it. Uh, and a lot of the work that I've done in terms of sexual assault prevention, you'll see that we also don't have that many bills. Let's sort of just talk to the administrators and, and, and get uh, the job done. Um, in terms of my record on advocating for students of color, um, my freshman year, I advocated to make sure I, I asked my friends of color, because when I came into student government, uh, you know, being a freshman, I saw that it was incredibly white. <laughs> you know, I, you know, th right now there's literally two black students in student government and just a handful of Latinos. SG fundamentally lacks racial diversity. 
So one thing I did is, you know, it wasn't a bill, but I asked a lot of my friends of color to join Senate and, and put in an application to run for Senate because I sort of felt alone um, being uh, one of the few minorities in student government. This last year, with the darkening, I've been to many of their events uh, pushing and putting my uh, weight on those causes. Uh, I've been to multiple BSA events, just doing everything I can to make sure that these organi organizations know that I'm right behind them. Um, but how much time do we have so I can just respond to? You have about, about a minute. minute. A minute, perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, Sasha, with all due respect, there you go again. You keep saying, you know, we need to work on student worker rights. And I 100% agree, we need to make sure that we're working on that, and that's going to be a huge priority. But I've asked multiple uh, leaders of the RA stipend increase movement on campus, and they've told me that Sasha never reached out to them. So we need to make sure that uh, next year the student government president uh, is advocating for student worker rights because a lot of them are underpaid and overworked. Um, yeah. Can oh, well I just I respond to that really quickly? Of course. Sure. I wasn't able to reach out to those individuals because by reaching out as somebody who's trying to protect them, I'm actually jeopardizing their jobs. I conducted anonymous interviews over the summer with RAs and DRs and PAs who really put their jobs on the line in order to make sure that their voices got heard. I, I am very aware that those students were made, uh, they were made aware of the work that I was doing and they were told that they were able to reach out to me, but they chose not to. I won't take the blame from you for not uh, putting their jobs on the line. I just won't take that. Can I respond to that? Yes. Um, absolutely, I understand that that does jeopardize her job, but the one there was a handful of RAs that were openly advocating for this, um, who were already jeopardizing their jobs because they were advocating for themselves. So I'm saying you could have reached out to them um, because you keep running, hey, this year I've been working student worker rights, but very, res very little results are there. The reason that those results didn't take place is because the <coughs> current student government administration chose not to publish my report. Leadership is top down. As student government president, I'll make sure that my leadership is also top down and that we take aggressive actions on every single issue on this campus. The current student government administration chose to focus on a select few policy issues and unfortunately when we take political agendas like that, we aren't actually when we take political agendas like that, we aren't actually solving the issues on this campus. We're just playing politics. Yep. I'm right. not going to take <laughs> this kind of bantering with you when you're telling me that I didn't do enough for those student workers. It's yep. absolutely right, unacceptable. Well, th that's enough time for that topic. You'll both have plenty of time to address it later at the town hall if you feel like you still have more to say. Martin, do you have anything to say about this? Or are you ready yeah, for I just question? I just have one short question for Sasha. Have you ever been a student worker here on American University campus? I'm not a student worker. The reason that I was able to do the work that I did is because I was able to conduct those interviews and not jeopardize my own job. When there are students who are also student workers working on that report, they put themselves in jeopardy. And how did your position come about? I was appointed to my position by Sophia Worth. Okay, thank you. All right, great. So Martin, our next question for you is you've talked a lot about increasing funding for arts groups on campus, and I know you were endorsed by AU in Motion. Can you talk thank a little you. bit more <laughs> about your plan for this? Of course. Um, theater groups and anywhere from the dance organizations on this campus. Uh, just like club sports, they're once again ignored. Um, we need to make sure that we're creating these co-sponsorships and able to work through AUCC, um, making sure that we're expanding opportunities through student government, uh, utilizing the newly elected comptroller, uh, and utilizing the funds available in the president's cabinet. Um, I really believe that, <laughs> for me, I, the way I vision um, this being able to address this issue is sometime during the semester, either semester, hold, hosting a music and an arts festival on the quad. I really think that we need to take pride in the American University students that are getting a college education at the College of Arts and Sciences and being able to really hone in on being appreciative of their work. Um, I've been to a few performances through, throughout my time here at AU. I've I've gone to Katzen a few times to appreciate the artwork that is there. Uh, I, I really feel that, th again, once again, the campus community, whether it's club sports, whether it's being addressing theater and dance organizations, where we have student government turning the cheek. And a huge part is the student experience, and they are part of the student experience. And we need to make sure that we hone in on that and be able to address that. So, right, great. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much, Martin.
Okay, Sasha. Um, you mentioned that you wanted a copy of every AU textbook on course reserves. Mm -hmm. um, do you know about how many textbooks that would be and how much that may cost the university? Uh, I haven't really done a look into that because frankly, I don't really think it matters how much it costs. The cost that really matters is the undue burden that's put on students when they're forced to buy textbooks that they end up not using, that they only use for one semester for a gen ed. I think that course reserves need to be expanded regardless of the cost to American University because it's not about what it costs American University, it's about what it costs for our students. Thank you. All right, great, thanks. And so, Brian, you mentioned in your platform something about a day of action. Can you elaborate on that, please? Uh, can you expand on that? I don't know exactly what you're talking about, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, well, if you can't expand on it, then... <laughs> well, we believe your day of action had something to do with community service with AU. Is that maybe one of your platform points? I don't remember. I, I <laughs> so I, I don't think that's part of my platform, I'm sorry. Okay. Well, I'd like to actually bring it back to um, your first question that when we came back yeah. from the break. Um, we understand that it is um, probably going to be difficult as a minority to try to get things done, but as a fellow minority, don't you feel that we would know that it's going to be a long and tiresome journey and that shouldn't have really um, prohibited you from trying in the first place to maybe get some legislation passed from the student government? Absolutely. So to be completely fair, the first year uh, in my service in student government, um, you know, very similar to Sasha, I was not aware of a lot of the issues that students of color uh, were, str were struggling with. Uh, and luckily, thanks to the darkening movement, that opened up my eyes and I learned so much about what black students on this campus have to deal with. But the second I learned about that, I did everything in my power to make sure that we were advocating for students of color. Okay. Um, we've also been hearing, uh, when we discuss minorities on campus, we've been mainly um, focusing, or you guys have been mainly focusing on um, ethnic minorities, but what would you um, feel about the issues of the LGBTQ community? I know, Brian, you've spoken on it a little bit, but I'd like to hear from um, Sasha and um, Martin. Of course. Would you like Martin to go first because he's first? Go sure. Ahead. Sure. Uh, I'm actually part of the LGBT community. Um, I, I am bisexual. I really feel that this campus community is, as Brian says, a little bit. Um, we pride ourselves of being able to hone in on a lot of these issues, but we're not. We are always, we're always reactive instead of being proactive. And I feel like they don't. Uh, the queers and allies, other organizations on campus that represent the LGBT community, they don't even have space at the table, even in MGC, to represent a large population on our campus. Um, during my time at Senate, I actually passed um, safe space training uh, f for all students to be um, in Senate. There was a fix that we need to provide for students who are representing the LGBT community and beyond, um, and being able to be mindful of that. So I feel like we need to take pri prerogative in this um, issue and being able to foster students, you know, being part of the LGBT community. I feel like I'm still uncomfortable being on this campus and we need to make sure that we are hosting workshops to make students here, uh, give them the opportunity to learn more about um, what we face as a minority and being able to push that into the broad spectrum. Uh, I'm not a member of the LGBTQ community, so I won't profess to fully understand the problems that those students face on this campus, which is why I don't claim to fight for those students. I want to fight with them. I will be a fearless ally for students in that community because I believe it's incredibly important. They're a huge portion of our population, and they deserve a lot better than they've gotten over the last few years. And okay. how will you do that? I will make sure that the directors in my cabinet are empowered to do so. I want to uh, make sure that the people that I appoint are experts on those issues because I can't be an expert on every single issue and I won't claim to be one. I want to make sure that that's a person that is motivated in that community and is empowered to do what they need to do. All right, well, Sasha, while we're on that note, you've been serving in Sophia Worth's cabinet as the Director of Student Rights. Mm -hmm. And I know you mentioned earlier some of your work in regards to student worker rights. Can you talk about anything else that you've done while serving in this position? Yeah, I've been in the process of reforming academic grievance policy. Academic grievance policy is something so that we can protect students from prejudicial grading. So right now it means that you can't be misgraded based on your race, your gender, your political identity, anything of that sort. Unfortunately, the policy is hard to find online. It's very difficult to read, and also it doesn't protect students 
with mental illnesses, learning disabilities, and physical disabilities. I've been in the process of reforming that all year, and actually right now it's in the middle of being taken by the provost's office. All right. So now we're going to move into your closing statements. Um, we're going to go in the same order that we've been going. Uh, we're going to go Martin, Sasha, Brian. And you can also use this time to address any other points that were brought up in the debate that you didn't feel like you got to answer fully. So we're going to start with you, Martin. Thank you. Um, from sexual pro assault prevention to financial aid, giving sports, club sports a, a place at the table, and everywhere in between. I cannot wait to speak at the town hall um, for all the students who have been watching online or in their uh, residence hall. Please come. Please ask questions that were not asked during this debate. I really believe that you, as a student, have taken your civic responsibility uh, and duty to make sure you hear the values of all of us here. And now it's time to turn it over to you. Um, and I'm looking forward to continuing these talks in the next hour. Uh, and it, it doesn't stop here. Um, and I'm going to say this on behalf of all of us. Please approach us on any issue that you feel is necessary. Uh, we are open. Uh, we're running on issues that are really important to you. And we want to make sure that, well, I want to make sure that I create the American you want. Thank you. I've been fighting for student worker rights all year. And the notion that I haven't done enough for them is insulting. And I think it's really degrading. I will take the fight that I took with student worker rights into every single issue that faces this community. I've proposed the most extensive platform of any student government race at American University ever, not just in this current cycle. That demonstrates my commitment to not just saying I problems and ideas on this campus, but proposing real solutions so that we can actually get things done in student government. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm asking for your vote because I want more from SG than what SG has been. I want action, I want solutions, because student government hasn't been what I believe in this year. Listen, there's a lot of huge, serious issues on our campus. Students are having to leave this university because they don't have the money to pay for it, and AU Central isn't making that easier. Students with severe mental health issues like depression, and anxiety aren't getting the help they need and the counseling center isn't helping. Students are being sexually assaulted and they don't feel comfortable going to AU because AU won't do anything. S student employees on campus like RAs are being overworked and underpaid and not receiving the support they deserve. Clubs, student media, and Greek life don't have the space they need and students of color on this campus don't feel necessarily comfortable, safe, or included. The next SU president needs to be a fiery passionate, strong leader that won't stop until the job gets done. I'm confident because I believe in the power of student voice that together we're going to move in a brighter direction for a better American for all of us. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Martin. Thank you, Sasha. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. And thank you for watching. I'm Jalen Chapman. And I'm Michaela Amos. Make sure to join us after the debate in Tavern for our town hall.